Routing individual sounds from a single multi-out contact instrument to separate tracks and sonar requires configuring and connecting three things. The instrument's outputs, contact's output mixer, and sonar's tracks. To start, I'll load the 16 output version of contact into an empty project. Sonar can load synth audio output tracks automatically. I'm going to choose all synth audio outputs mono because most of the channels in the contact drum instrument will be mono. Next, I'll load Abbey Road 60's drums into Contact. And make sure Contact's output mixer is showing. If it's not for some reason, just click the output button at the top of Contact. And I've got the output mixer's inserts hidden because I'm not going to be working with those at all. By default, Contact routes its audio through a single stereo channel, which is being split into two separate mono tracks and sonar. And you can see that as I click on the various kit pieces. In order to send each kit piece to its own track and sonar, I need to figure out how many mono and stereo channels I need, so I'll count off each mono and stereo channel in the drum kit's mixer page. So there are five main kit pieces, plus the three percussion pieces, the mono overhead mic, plus the stereo overhead and room mics, which makes a total of nine mono channels and two stereo channels. The first step in building Contact's output mixer in this case is to change its single default stereo channel to a mono channel. To do that, click the output assignment button in the channel to open its property page and change the number of audio channels from two to one. And I'll rename the channel since I have the window open. Click OK to make the change and Contact will open a pop-up window in short stating that the changes made to the mixer won't be available to the instrument Abbey Road 60's drums until the instrument is reloaded, which I'll do later. Now I need eight more mono channels, so I'll click on Add Channels and choose a quantity of eight and change the number of channels to one so that each channel is mono. Also, make sure that Ascending Output Assignment is selected. This will assign the outputs of the new channels in series from two through nine. Now I need to tell Contact on which channel to start this assignment, so I'll click on the tab that says Not Connected. This opens the list of available Contact outputs. This list of outputs can be confusing. The trick is to think of these as channels 1 through 16 from top to bottom, completely disregarding their names. I'll select the second channel in the list to start this series of channels on output 2, as output 1 is already in the output mixer. Click OK, and now Contact has nine mono outputs, routed channels one through nine. Now it's time to add those two stereo channels. This time choosing a quantity of two and leaving the number of audio channels on two for stereo. Because these channels are stereo, they use two mono outputs each. Outputs one through nine are taken, and I want to start these stereo channels on an odd number, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, so I'm going to start them on output 11, which is labeled as kit unassigned one. Click OK, and now there are two assigned stereo channels in Contact's output mixer. The aux tracks that are labeled with the same output numbers don't have to worry about those, as I'm not going to be using those at all. Now it's time to route the channels of the instrument to the channels of the output mixer. In Abbey Road 60's drums, the output assignments are on the bottom of each channel strip in the mixer page. This is where the instrument needs to be reloaded as the newly created outputs won't show up until it is. Now I can assign each individual kit piece to a separate output in Contact's mixer. The kick, snare, hi-hat, and toms will each get their own mono channels. Typically, mono channels have pan controls while stereo channels have width controls. Flipping over to the percussion page, each percussion piece will get its own mono channel. The mono overhead mic gets a mono channel as well. And I'll route the stereo overhead and room mics to the two stereo channels. Now I need to change two of Sonar's mono tracks into stereo tracks to handle these two stereo channels. I'll keep tracks 1 through 9 as the 9 mono tracks, and I'll convert tracks 10 and 11 into stereo tracks. Sonar handles inputs as stereo pairs. This may look different if you're using a different DAW. Additionally, the labeling of contact outputs in Sonar can be confusing, so I'm just going to count down to outputs 11 and 12. In this case, contact mono 6 slash contact mono 7 stereo is the right choice. 
and for track 11 I'll choose the next stereo output down. As a bit of house cleaning I'll delete the remaining tracks and sonar that are not needed. Now each kit piece is routed to its own track in sonar. At first it may appear that the kit pieces are not playing back through separate tracks. This is because of the instrument's snare bleed control and overhead and room mic channels. To verify that everything is routed correctly, I'll mute the room and overhead channels in the instrument and disable the snare bleed. Now it's easier to verify that each kit piece is indeed routed to its own track and sonar. And with the overhead channels muted, previewing the cymbals makes no noise as expected. Unmuting them, and there we have the cymbals in stereo with the other kit pieces in mono. Finally, it's well worth saving all of this hard work as a preset. Click on the presets slash batch configuration tab in contact and choose save output section preset as. Give the preset a name and click save. Now the preset will show up at the bottom of the menu. The output configuration can also be saved as a default for the various plugin formats that contact is available in. Watch more videos at dogaroo.com slash dogaroo TV and join the community at dogaroo.com slash forum.